Hey guys, I want to spend a few minutes talking about AC single phase AC induction motors and uh, how to troubleshoot them because it's one thing to, you know, kind of know how they're built and what the different wiring configurations are and things like that. It's probably more important for you guys as electricians to know what steps to take uh, when the motor doesn't want to do what it's supposed to do, which is run properly. Okay, guys? So I'm going to go over a couple of scenarios, I guess, with you guys. Talk about, uh, you know, what are you going to do? How are you going to check a motor uh, to make sure it's okay? What are the symptoms of a motor that's not okay? Um, you know, what tools do you need to check it properly? Uh, so let's do that for a minute. So the first thing I want to talk about, or at least mention here for you guys, is that, and this is true for all motors, okay, not just single phase AC motors, but it's true for all motors, and that is a motor's current is going to be directly proportional to its load. In other words, a motor that is drawing over its FLA is not necessarily a motor that is in bad condition okay so if you're walking up to the machine and the guy who's operating it says that motor keeps tripping out i have to reset it all over and over again you know what does that mean exactly like why is a motor tripping out and why does it need resetting all the time and does that mean that the motor is in you know is damaged and the answer is no because a motor's current has nothing to do with what's rated, you know, what's on the FLA plate or on the nameplate, okay? The nameplate will have an FLA for a motor. Let's say I'm looking at a motor and it says the FLA is 10 amps. That doesn't mean it's going to draw 10 amps. It just means that it can draw 10 amps if it's running at its rated horsepower or it will draw 10 amps if it's running at its rated horsepower. But if you manage to get a motor to run at over its rated horsepower, in other words, you've put a load, you put out a 12 amp, a 12 horsepower load on a 10 horsepower motor your 10 horsepower motor will deliver you know 12 horsepower to the load because a motor is as lazy as you let it be and it's going to work as hard as you make it work okay the only thing is if your 10 horsepower motor is delivering 12 horsepower or producing 12 horsepower it's going to be doing so at over its FLA okay and so if you walk up to a machine and the guy says it keeps tripping out and you put your ammeter on there and it's, you know, the the FLA of the motor is 10 and it says 12 on your ammeter, that's not because the motor is damaged, okay? It is because 90% of the time, okay, it's going to be because the load is exceeding its horsepower, okay, guys? And that's what the motor is designed to do. It will increase its current you know, together or proportional with the amount of power that you are demanding of it, okay? The amount of mechanical power you are demanding of it. So one thing I noticed, you know, in my years is that guys, especially people who weren't electricians, okay, would assume that the motor is broken because it is drawing more than its FLA, okay? And that is not the case 99% of the time. 99% of the time, if a motor is drawing more than its FLA, it's because it is driving a load that exceeds its horsepower rating. And you got to be careful with that because if the guy has a cement mixer and he it keeps tripping out, it could be because he's putting too much cement in the cement mixer. Or it could be that the bearings are shot. Or it could be that, you know, it's, the you know, whatever. There's a million, something rubbing on the belt or on the, Whatever, there's a million reasons why the load could exceed the maximum horsepower of the motor, okay? And I don't want you to discard or assume that the motor needs to be replaced because the motor is drawing more than its FLA. And some of the things that you can do, you know, to check it is to, you know, take the belt off if you can. Sometimes you can, like, reduce the load, right? Uh, empty the, empty the, cement mixer or take the belt off and run the motor without a load on it and check the uh, check the uh, current with an ammeter again you should notice that the current is a lot lower um, things like that okay now another thing um, what tools you know are you going to need to troubleshoot an AC motor okay and I'm gonna say right now 
that your number one tool that you want to grab if you're going to be doing some troubleshooting on an AC motor is a clamp-on ammeter, okay, because you're going to be wanting to clamp on to the motor leads uh, while it's running to determine how much current is flowing, okay. Um, the second tool is probably going to be an ohm meter, guys, because if you want to check the motor, you're going to have to check the motor windings, and the best tool for checking the motor windings is a ohm meter to start. Now, some uh, electricians say, no, you should get a megger out. And a megger is a good tool, and we'll talk about the megger, but I would never start with a megger. The two tools that I would grab out of my, the three tools I would grab out of my uh, toolbox if I was checking a motor, wanting to troubleshoot a motor, is a clamp-on ammeter, you know, a voltmeter, and a, and a ohm meter, and maybe those two are going to be the digital multimeter that you have, okay? So maybe two tools, digital multimeter and ammeter. Now, I would check, if somebody was telling me that the motor was tripping out, the first thing I would check is the current. I'd open the, uh, you know, get on one of the wires somewhere and get the guy to run the th thing and check the current and see how close it is to the FLA. Now, if the motor's running at over its FLA, you know, try to reduce the load on the motor somehow and see if that improves the situation, okay? If the motor is running at over its FLA and there is no load, no mechanical load on the motor, then yes, I would definitely suspect that that motor is damaged, okay? But if you take the mechanical load off and it's, the current goes way down, then I would start looking at what's wrong with the load, okay? Not what's wrong with the motor. That's the first thing. Now, I have had it before where I'm checking the FLA of the motor, and it is below the rated FLA, but it's still tripping out the motor. Now, there's a couple of things that could be going on there, and the most common one is that the overloads are incorrectly set, or the overloads are just damaged, okay? And so sometimes you have to replace the overload block, um, or, you know, you might have to turn up the... the uh, overloads if they weren't set correctly to begin with. Okay guys, so those are the two things. Now, let's say uh, I'm starting to suspect the motor is damaged maybe and I want to check it further. The best way to check a motor further is first of all you have to shut it off and then the second thing you want to do is check the resistance of the windings. Okay, now you're only now, you're going to be checking this out, okay? So I don't care if it's capacitor start, capacitor run, whatever. There's a lot of different options here. Basically, all motors are going to be, when they're stopped at least, you know, the two windings that are in there, right? The start winding and the run winding. And so now you've disconnected it from the source. You've unplugged it. You've done whatever it takes. You've locked it out. You never want to check a motor with an ohm meter if it's still connected to the source, okay guys? And so you're gonna measure, you know, maybe from line one to line two with an ohm meter. Now the question is, and the problem is, you know, how much should it, you know, how many ohms should it be, okay? And the real problem with that is, guys, that the answer is I have no idea, okay? I don't know, you don't know, nobody knows. Maybe the manufacturer of the motor knows, but he didn't put it on the nameplate, okay? How many ohms the windings of the resistance is. But I can tell you right now what the windings is not supposed to be, okay? So if you're checking the resistance of this winding, it should not be zero ohms, okay? If this winding is measuring zero ohms, that means this thing's a dead short, okay? And there's no way any motor is going to be zero ohms. And if it is zero ohms, there is something very wrong with it. The other thing it should not be, guys, you know, sometimes you get just as much information by knowing what it should not be than knowing what it should be, okay? It should not be OL, okay? So if you're checking motor resistance with a digital ohm meter, okay? It should not be zero ohms and it should not be OL. And what is OL? Well, OL means over limit, right guys? Which means that it is unlimited resistance. In other words, if you, if you check an open circuit, guys, with a digital multimeter, your multimeter is going to say OL because over limit means it's so high that I can't measure it with, you know, with whatever setting that I've put my meter on, okay? So your motor should not be zero ohms because that would be a short. It should not say OL because that would just be a straight up open circuit, okay? And it should be 
some, <laughs> okay, reasonable number. <laughs> okay, and that's all I'm going to say about that because I don't know what that reasonable number is. But I do know it's going to be, I'm going to say in the teens maybe. Okay, but even that is questionable, okay? Because you don't know you don't know what it's supposed to be, okay? But it's it shouldn't be zero or one ohms, okay? And it shouldn't be unlimited amounts of resistance. It should be some reasonable amount of resistance. And unfortunately for you guys, you're not gonna know. But if I was checking a motor and it said 13 ohms or 15 ohms, or 19 ohms, or 21 ohms, or 9 ohms, or 8 ohms, or something like that, I would go that motor probably looks okay, all right? And you won't know for sure, all right? Because you just don't know for sure. But, um, you know, it's better than zero or OL. That's all you know. And I'd probably go that thing. That thing seems like it might be all right. Because if it's shorted, it's going to be zero, right? And if it's open, it's going to be open, and that's all there is to it. Uh, so this is going to be a bit of a guessing game, and it's going to take some experience before you uh, start to feel confident about it. Now, the other thing I'm going to say about troubleshooting an AC motor is, guys, you know what your, your best tool for determining whether a motor is in good shape or bad shape is? It's going to be your nose. All right, guys? Because... I don't know about you, but I've never encountered a piece of electrical equipment that was in good condition that didn't smell. Oh, did I say that right? Okay. In other words, I have never encountered a piece of electrical equipment that was in bad condition that didn't smell like it was bad. And you know what smell I'm talking about. Okay, guys? Everybody knows the smell when a piece of equipment is blown up, okay? It smells like it's burnt out, okay? And so don't be afraid to stick your nose close to the motor and uh, give it a whiff and see if it smells good. Usually if it smells good, it is good, okay? And if it smells bad, it is bad. But uh, don't rely only on your nose. Check your resistance, okay? Now there is another, you know, this is line to line, right? Line one to line two, there's another check you can do, and that is resistance to ground, right? And if you're checking a motor with a digital multimeter to ground, what you should get, so it should, it should not be zero ohms, okay? If you're checking a winding from line one to ground, okay, and you're seeing zero ohms, that means your motor is shorted to ground, right guys? And uh, so it should not be zero ohms, and it should be what, guys? Come on. It should say OL, right? If your motor shows OL over limit from uh, one of the line one or line two to ground, then uh, that motor is you know, not shorted to ground, okay guys? So two checks you can do with your multimeter. One is the winding resistance, should be in the teens maybe, something like that. The other one is the resistance from the windings to ground. Your meter had better say OL. Now if it says zero ohms, you can stop right there. That motor is no good. Now, now that we've talked about that guys, what's the mega for? Okay, now your megger is a resistance checker, so why would I need a megger to check the resistance of my winding when I can just check the resistance of my winding with a digital multimeter? Well, your digital multimeter doesn't output enough voltage to properly stress the winding resistance, okay? And so your meter might show as OL, which is a good motor, okay? But then when you check it with a megger, it shows zero ohms, and that's because your mega puts out 500 or 1,000 volts, and your digital multimeter puts out, you know, 5 or 10 or something like that, okay, really low. So, you know, you can check a motor with a, digi with a mega, guys, but I would only do that if I've checked it with my multimeter first, and it showed OL, and it still doesn't run, okay? You're, it's, it's blowing fuses, but you check it with your uh, multimeter, and it shows good. Then you might need to get your 
Megger out and check the resistance and put the resistance under the same kind of stress or more than the line voltage would. Okay, so 99% of your motor troubleshooting guys can be done with a ohm meter. It's going to be 1% of the time when it seems to check out okay with your ohm meter, but it still won't run right. Then you might have to get your megger out. Now, I know this meeting is get this video is getting long, but how do you check a motor with a megger? Well, you put one lead on the line, right? Line two or line one, and the other lead, you know, here's your megger, right? Excuse me for a second, guys. I'm getting a fire call here to ground.